I would like to share the Word of God entitled Christ An Sang Hong, who established Zion. We can categorize the book of Jeremiah as a major prophet. When we read Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 5, we can see a very important prophecy. It is written, People who will be saved in the last days need to go to one place. Where is it? Through the words, In the last days, the people of God must go to Zion. God is teaching us where we must go to receive salvation and escape the last disaster. Let's see this teaching in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 5. Announce in Judah and proclaim in Jerusalem and say, Sound the trumpet throughout the land. Cry loud and say, Gather together. Let us flee to the fortified cities. Where should we go? Raise a signal to go to Zion. Flee for safety without delay. Where should we flee to? Flee to Zion. For I am bringing disaster from the north, even terrible destruction. God let His people in the last days know that they should go to Zion. However, can we find Zion just by knowing that the Bible tells us to flee to Zion? Where is Zion? According to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the people of God in the last days need to go there. God dwells in Zion. There we can receive the forgiveness of sins and eternal life. It is also written that God has prepared the blessings of redemption in Zion. However, since people do not know about Zion, many people will stagger from north to east searching for it, but they will not find it. As a result, people will not be able to receive salvation. Let's go to Psalm chapter 133, Psalm chapter 133, verse 1. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his ropes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were falling on Mount Zion. For there, where is there? In Zion, the Lord bestows His blessing, even life, forevermore. That is right. Since God promised to give eternal life in Zion, the people of God in the last days need to go to Zion. This is the voice of God. This is God's command. The words for our blessing, isn't it? Let's go to Psalm chapter 132, chapter 132, verse 12. If your sons keep my covenant and the statutes I teach them, then their sons will sit on your throne forever and ever. For the Lord has chosen what? Chosen Zion. God has chosen Zion as His dwelling place. There are 850 denominations claiming to believe in God. However, God has only chosen Zion, no other place. For the Lord has chosen Zion. Why has God chosen Zion? He has desired it for His dwelling. In other words, God has chosen Zion as His house, His eternal dwelling place. This is my resting place forever and ever. Here I will sit enthroned, for I have desired it. I will bless her with abundant provisions. Her poor will I satisfy with food. I will clothe her priests with salvation, and her saints will ever sing for joy. 
The Bible said that Zion is God's eternal dwelling place. It is not God's temporary dwelling place. Zion is God's resting place until the eternal kingdom of heaven comes. Eternal means there is no end, doesn't it? Since God has chosen Zion as His resting place and eternal dwelling place, the people of God in the last days need to go to Zion. Then, some people may think, Ah, I want to go to Zion since it is a good place. Shouldn't we know where Zion is? Where is Zion? Let's study more about this by going to Isaiah chapter 33, verse 20. Look upon Zion, the city of our festivals. Spiritually, Zion is the church that keeps God's feasts. Look upon Zion, the city of our festivals. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, a peaceful abode, a tent that will not be moved. Its stakes will never be pulled up, nor any of its ropes broken. There the Lord. Where does there indicate? Zion will be our mighty one. It will be like a place of broad rivers and streams. No galley with oars will ride them, no mighty ship will sail them. For the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver. What law did God establish? The law of the new covenant. The Lord is our king, it is he who will save us. Your rigging hangs loose, the mass is not held secure, the sail is not spread. Then an abundance of spoils will be divided, and even the lame will carry off plunder. No one living in Zion will say, I am ill, and the sins of those who dwell there. Where is there? Zion. Those who dwell in Zion will be what? Will be forgiven. It is written, God will forgive the sins of those who dwell in Zion and give them salvation. God who established the law of the new covenant will be with us in Zion where we can keep the feast of God. When it comes to the feast, in Leviticus 23, there is a weekly feast, which is the Sabbath day, and the seven annual feasts. What are the annual feasts? The Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Day of First Fruits, the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. These are the feasts that God established for us. However, even though there are so many denominations in the world, no one keeps these feasts. Isn't it astonishing? However, our God established one church that keeps all these feasts. The name of that church is the Church of God. The Church of God is the only church on the earth that keeps the seven feasts in three times and the Sabbath day. Then, we can easily understand these matters. God is with what kind of church? Where should we go to receive eternal life and the forgiveness of sins? Then who established God's dwelling place, the place where we can receive eternal life and the forgiveness of sins? Today, we need to understand these matters. O Zion, the city of feasts, is the church of God. We shouldn't think lightly about these matters. We should find our God who is with us as our Mighty One. That is why God prophesied about Zion many times through the Bible and the prophets, so that the people of God can find God. Today, let's study the prophecies regarding Zion in the Bible. We know that there are two types of Zion, physical Zion 
and spiritual Zion. Physically, Zion is in Palestine where the Israelites live. King David established physical Zion. Then who will establish spiritual Zion? The Bible said that Jesus Christ would establish spiritual Zion. Let's confirm that matter by going to Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 24. My servant David will be king over them, and they will all have one shepherd. They will follow my laws and be careful to keep my decrees. They will live in the land I gave to my servant Jacob, the land where your fathers lived. They and their children and their children's children will live there forever, and David my servant will be their prince forever. When the prophet Ezekiel wrote this prophecy, physical King David had already died a long time ago. However, God said, My servant David will be king. In this verse, King David does not indicate physical King David. God has shown us through the prophecy about the prophetic figure who will come in the name of King David. The Bible explains that King David will reign forever. Then, who is my servant David in Ezekiel chapter 37? Let's find the answer by going to Luke chapter 1, verse 31. Luke chapter 1, verse 31. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will do what? He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. This is about the birth of Jesus. The angel Gabriel appeared and testified to this prophecy. The angel Gabriel said, He will sit on David's throne, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Like this, God fulfilled the prophecy in Ezekiel 37. Physical David and spiritual David Physical King David established physical Zion. So we can firmly believe that the spiritual David would establish the spiritual Zion. Let's find out that physical David conquered physical Zion and established it. Let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 5. 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 7. Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, the city of David. Here, we can see that the first work David did as king was build Zion. Therefore, when we fully understand King David, we will be able to fully understand Zion. Physical David established physical Zion. This shows us that Jesus Christ, who is spiritual David, will establish spiritual Zion, where we can keep the Feast of God. When you see Isaiah chapter 33, verse 20, it is written, Zion is a place where we can keep the Feast of God. David established Zion. This means that Jesus established a place where we can keep the Feast of God. Let's find out briefly about how Jesus established the New Covenant Feast of God. Let's go to Matthew chapter 26, verse 17. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, 
The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. Among the seven feasts and three times, the Passover comes first. Jesus kept the Passover and established the new covenant on the day of the Passover. Let's go to John chapter 7. John chapter 7, verse 2. But when the Jewish Feast of Tabernacles was near, Jesus' brother said to him, When you go to verse 14, we can see that it was halfway through the feast. When you read verse 37, we can see that Jesus is keeping the Feast of Tabernacles, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink at the last and greatest day of the feast. In Acts chapter 2, verse 1, it is written, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. The Pentecost is the Feast of Weeks in the Old Testament times. Seven times seven equals 49. The Feast of Weeks comes one day after 49 days. That's why it was called the Feast of Weeks. In the New Testament times, this feast is called the Pentecost. The saints of the early church kept all these feasts upholding the will of Jesus. The Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Pentecost, and the Feast of Weeks. These feasts are in the Bible. Jesus and His disciples kept these feasts graciously. They also kept the Sabbath day. However, according to the prophecies in the Bible, Zion, where we keep the Feast of God, would be destroyed. Let's confirm this by going to the book of Daniel, chapter 7. Daniel, chapter 7, verse 25. He will speak against the Most High. Here, the Most High refers to God, right? The one who speaks against God is Satan. Satan will speak against the Most High and oppress his saints, and what else? Try to change the set times and the laws. The saints will be handed over to him for a time, times, and half a time. He will try to change the set times and the laws. This means he will abolish the Feast of God. The fact that the Feast of God would be abolished shows that Zion would be destroyed. Zion is a place where we keep the Feast of God. However, the Feast would be abolished. That means, spiritually, Zion would be destroyed. When you read this verse, he will try to change the set times and the laws in the NLT version. It is written, he will try to change their sacred festivals and laws. The Bible prophesies that Satan would do this. The prophet Isaiah summarized this by saying, Zion will be ruined. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 51, verse 3. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. Spiritually, it means that the Feast of God would be abolished. Satan would change and abolish the Feast and the Law of God. In the book of Isaiah, this situation is described as Zion has been ruined. I will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like what? Like Eden. Her wastelands like the Garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. According to this prophecy, Zion must be rebuilt and restored.
Satan changed the set times in the laws, abolishing the Feast of God. The fact that the Feast of God would be abolished means Zion will be destroyed. However, according to the prophecy in Isaiah 51, God will make Zion, which was in ruins like Eden, and her wastelands like the Garden of the Lord. When will that day come? Let's find out by going to Micah chapter 4, verse 1. In the last days. When will this happen? In the last days. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and peoples will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us His ways, so that we may walk in His paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Here, we can see, in the last days, many peoples will stream to Zion. Doesn't that mean Zion will be established? Unless Zion is established, many nations cannot stream to Zion. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord. Mountain of the Lord means mountain Zion. To the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. God's laws, decrees, and feasts were all abolished. According to this prophecy, God has to come again and restore all the laws of the new covenant in the last days, doesn't he? It is written, so that we may walk in his paths. Even though Satan destroyed all of God's laws, God has restored everything. God turned the deserts into a garden like Eden, wastelands like the Garden of God. Every feast of God was abolished. However, through the prophet Micah, God prophesied that all the feasts of the New Covenant would be restored by God. The writer of Psalms explained about this very clearly, saying, God will come and rebuild Zion that has been ruined. Let's go to Psalm chapter 102, verse 1. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Let my cry for help come to you. Do not hide your face from me when I am in distress. Turn your ear to me when I call. Answer me quickly. Let's go to verse 12. But you, O Lord, sit enthroned forever. Your renown endures through all generations. You will arise and have compassion on Zion, for it is time to show favor to her. The appointed time has come, for her stones are dear to your servants. Her very dust moves them to pity. The nations will fear the name of the Lord. All the kings of the earth will revere your glory. For the Lord will rebuild what? Zion. Who will rebuild Zion? The Lord will rebuild Zion and appear in His glory. One thing we need to pay attention to is the word rebuild. When it speaks about building Zion, it doesn't say build, but rebuild, meaning to build again. Since God is going to restore Zion, which was once destroyed, it is written as rebuild instead of build. Let's go to Psalm chapter 87. Psalm 87, verse 5. Indeed of Zion it will be said, This one and that one were born in her, and the Most High Himself will establish her. 
The Lord will write in the register of the peoples, this one was born in Zion. Who is the Most High in this verse? God Himself will establish Zion. Psalm chapter 102 also says, God Himself will establish Zion. Spiritual Zion would be established through the Feast of God. When the Feast of God were abolished, Zion was devastated and destroyed. What does the Bible say about the one who comes and rebuilds Zion? Unless God comes, Zion can't be established. Nowadays, there are so many churches and denominations around us like the sand by the sea. Is there any church that keeps the seven feasts in three times? Is there any church that keeps the Feast of the New Covenant? Why can't we find it? It's because God did not establish those churches. In order for God to establish Zion, what kind of truth does He have to bring? He has to bring the Feast of the New Covenant. Without the Feast, Zion can't be established. Only when the Feasts are restored, Zion can be established. Two thousand years ago, God established the Feast of the New Covenant. However, it was destroyed by the enemy of God, Satan. The Bible says that God will restore all the feasts. Nowadays, the Sabbath, the Passover, and the seven feasts in three times that we once lost have been restored. What does that mean? Who restored all of these? God restored all of them. In these last days, who taught all the children of Zion about the Sabbath, the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Day of First Fruits, and the Feast of Tabernacles? Christ An Sang Hong. Christ An Sang Hong is God, whom the Bible and all the prophets testified about. Only God can restore the seven feasts in three times. Only God can let the children of God know about the feasts. There are so many churches and theologians around us. Haven't there been thousands of these made from the time of Jesus until now? However, is there any theologian or thesis insisting? We need to keep the Passover, the Sabbath day, and the seven feasts in three times? No. Why is that? Only who can do this? It is God. The Bible said that the Most High will establish Zion. When we read Psalm chapter 102, it is written that God will rebuild Zion that was in ruins. No one can restore the seven feasts in three times unless He is God. When we read Matthew 26, Jesus is keeping the Passover. How clear is that? When we read Luke 22, Apostle Peter and John prepared the Passover and kept the Passover with the rest of the Apostles and Mark's upper room. However, most churches nowadays do not keep the Passover. Isn't it astonishing? Why don't they keep it? It's because they do not accept the true God. The Passover was abolished at the Council of Nicaea in AD 325. After that, churches condemned the people who kept the Passover. The governmental law at the time prevented people from keeping the Passover. 
Laws were made to prevent people from keeping the Sabbath day. Like this, God's law was destroyed one by one. All the feasts were destroyed. God asked us to go to Zion. Even if we know about this prophecy, unless Zion is established, how can we go there? Someone has to come and establish Zion. According to the prophecies in the Bible, who can establish Zion? It is only God. Nowadays, we are keeping the feast of God in Zion. What does that mean? Who is with us? God has to come and restore the seven feasts in three times and the Sabbath day. God also allowed us to keep the Passover, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Day of First Fruits, the Feast of Weeks, the Feast of Trumpets, the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. God led us to keep all the feasts of God. What does that mean? It means Zion, which was once ruined, has been rebuilt. The Bible explained to us that God is the only one who can establish Zion. It is written in the book of Micah. In the book of Psalms, it is written, the Most High Himself will establish Zion. According to all these prophecies of the Bible, Christ An Sang Hong came and restored the seven feasts in three times that were ruined. Christ An Sang Hong is truly our God who rebuilt Zion in these last days. He is the one whom the Bible and the prophets prophesied about. Even though He came in the flesh like one of us, truly He is our Heavenly Father who came from heaven to save us. He also let us know the truth of Heavenly Mother and walked, carrying out the mission of Elijah. According to the teaching of Heavenly Father, there is one more Savior after me. In Revelation 22.17, the Spirit and the Bride are inviting all people in this world to receive eternal life. We have accepted this invitation. As a result, where are we now? We are in Zion. It is okay to have confidence in our salvation. Let us give eternal thanks, honor, and glory to Heavenly Father Christ An Sang Hong in this holy mountain Zion where we can keep the Feast of God. Let us also give thanks, honor, and glory to our New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother who came to this earth as the wife of the Holy Spirit to save us. Let us become witnesses of father and mother and boast about them to all nations. When the witnesses are silent, who will be affected? The one who appointed the witnesses will be affected. There are plaintiffs and defendants in the court. Plaintiffs will appoint someone as a witness who can defend them. That is why Isaiah 62 says, Do not be silent day or night to proclaim the glory of Jerusalem. We have a responsibility to let people know the grace that we have received. We should teach them where Zion is and who will establish Zion. New Jerusalem Heavenly Mother, who is the Bride of the Holy Spirit, is with us for our salvation. Let us preach to all people like this. Let me conclude today's sermon. Thank you and God bless you.